This is the first of five short videos about the astrolabe. The astrolabe is a calculator, a measuring device, and a reference book all rolled into a single tool. It was the original gadget. When Geoffrey Chaucer's son, Lewis, wanted to be one of the cool kids at Oxford, he persuaded his father to give him an astrolabe. And for more than a thousand years, that is up until about the 17th century, this was the device that demonstrated your mastery of current technology. The astrolabe has four parts. The base, which has a front and a back, the reet, and two pointers, one on the front side and one on the back. The front of the astrolabe represents the Earth and where you are on it. The main grid shows what you can see from the horizon to directly overhead. The centre of the base represents the North Pole, that is, the place where the pole star can be found. The top of the astrolabe is to the south and the bottom is to the north. Around the outside there are two rings. The outer one represents the 24 hours of the day and inside that we have a scale for measuring angles. Attached to the front is the reet. This represents the sky. This particular reet has a lot of named stars and constellations on it. Most reets have fewer stars and represent them with spikes instead of circles. As well as the stars, the reet also has a circle showing the path the sun follows over the course of a year. This is called the ecliptic. Both the front and the back have pointers to help make sure things are properly lined up. And on the back, there are various scales that have a range of uses. These will be covered in detail as we use them. In the next part of this series, we'll cover a few of the more interesting calculations that can be performed. For now, we'll just use the astrolabe to tell the time and illustrate a few of its functions on the way. Let's suppose that it is sometime during the morning of the 14th of April. In order to tell what time it is, the first thing we need to do is to measure how high the sun is above the horizon. We can do that using the pointer on the back of the astrolabe. If the astrolabe is hanging vertically from its ring, then the pointer can be pointed towards the sun. Do this using the shadow rather than by staring directly at the sun, of course. Once the pointer is positioned, the altitude can be read off on the outer scale. In this case, the sun is 40 degrees above the horizon. Locations on the ecliptic are measured using zodiac position, such as 10 degrees in Leo, for example. So the current secular date has to be converted into a suitable zodiac position. This conversion can be done using two of the rings on the back. Lining the pointer up to the 14th of April shows that this is equivalent to 25 degrees in Aries. Turning the astrolabe over, the reed represents the sky. On the 14th of April, the sun is at the point on the ecliptic that matches 25 degrees in Aries. The grid on the front of the base shows what can be seen from our location. For example, where the horizon is, where the altitude is 10 degrees above the horizon, 20 degrees, and so on. The reet does a complete clockwise revolution every day. In order to match the current sky position, it must be turned so the sun's position is 40 degrees above the horizon. With the reet in this position, the pointer indicates that the time is just before 10 a.m. local time. Of course, because we're currently in summer time, then 10 a.m. local time will actually be 9 a.m. on the clock. This has been the first part of our series about astrolabes. Other parts will cover different calculations, the history and how they work. 